Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everybody doing? Well, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. Isaiah 44, 3. It seems a very appropriate verse with after what happened last night. The Lord blesses like no other. A situation that technically should have gone the other direction because of the evil forces that were at work same forces that were at work in the prior election did not win. They failed, and they failed in miserable and spectacular fashion. Praise God for his wonderful hand working in our time now, and that we can see it. We can see it happening. So let's read this verse, this whole verse, and read it in context. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. So he's talking about, I'm going to pour this stuff out on those that come after you. Well, that's us. We come after him. It came after Isaiah. Let's get some context here. We'll start in verse one. Israel, the Lord's chosen. Again, to the naysayers, to those that say that the church has replaced Israel, I say, there's no possible way. It is literally impossible. You can you can fancify it, you can imagine it, you can try to paint the picture, but it is impossible. And here's a funny thing: if you imagine somebody painting a picture of Israel and then painting the picture of the church replacing Israel, the picture looks the same. We are the children of Israel after a sense. Because we came after them. We're the product of them. Because our Messiah comes from them. And so as the church, we're the, we would be basically the daughter of Israel. Without Israel, we don't exist. Without Israel, we don't have a Messiah. Why would God throw away his first chosen people? Doesn't matter. Doesn't make any sense. It's an illegitimate understanding. Because God won't do it. And he hasn't done it and isn't going to do it. The church is the church. Israel is Israel. We all serve the same God. Yet hear me now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not. <coughs> Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. Water was a big thing here. It's funny because I've done digging into my family name and it turns out my particular family name um, traces back to some minor Ju uh, Polish princes uh, way back who had fled Poland because they were under siege. Many of them came here and adjusted their name a little bit. Um, and then in that research, trying to trace down some of my lineage, I found a, a connection, a Jewish connection, to the surname Wasser, which, is, which means water. Interesting. Just a side note. Did my own digging. Stumbled across it. I can't. I can't, I can't not see it now. And every time I go and dig into it, I, I keep finding the same connection. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Now, if you know anything about willow trees, there's two kinds, I think two kinds, maybe three of willow trees. So there's a weeping willow. That's a big tree. But there's another kind of willow tree and it grows real close together and it's it grows one or two inches around down by... Uh, rivers and creeks. Um, here in Texas, it grows fairly prominently near drainage ditches. And I mean, it, it you can find a lot of it. It grows everywhere. People make furniture out of that one. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. And that's what they do. These things spring up everywhere. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another will write with his hand, the Lord's 
and name himself by the name of Israel. And yet all are gods. One person will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. will say he's a Jew. He's of the tribe of Jacob. Another will, or of the group Jacob. And another will write with his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. I don't fully understand what that means, but it's talking about three different types of people. Interesting. All right, then he goes into another context after this. So now we're going to go to our devotion. When a believer has fallen into a low, sad state of feeling, he often tries to lift himself out of it by chastening himself with dark and doleful fears. Such is not the way to rise from the dust, but to continue in it. As well, chain the eagle's wings to make it mount, as doubt in order in it to increase our grace. It is not the law, but the gospel which saves the seeking soul at first, and it is not a legal bondage, but gospel liberty, which can restore the fainting believer afterwards. Slavish fear brings not back the backslider to God, but the sweet wooings of love allure him to Jesus' bosom. Are you this morning thirsting for the living God, and unhappy because you cannot find him to the delight of your heart? Have you lost the joy of religion? And is this your prayer? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Are you conscious also that you are barren, like the dry ground, that you are not bringing forth the fruit unto God, which he has a right to expect of you, that you are not so useful in the church or in the world as your heart desires to be? I think this describes probably every single or almost every single believer on the earth. Either at one point in their walk or right now. I think we've all been here or are here at this moment. Then here is exactly the promise which you need. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. You shall receive the grace you so much require and you shall have it to the utmost reach of your needs. Give me just one second. Sorry about that. Water refreshes the thirsty. Water refreshes the thirsty. You shall be refreshed. Your desires shall be gratified. Water quickens sleeping vegetable life. Your life shall be quickened by fresh grace. Water swells the buds and makes the fruits ripen. You shall have fruit to find grace. You shall be made fruitful in the ways of God. Sometimes we get we, we lose our patience on these things. We get we get we get in a hurry. I mean, we want it to happen right now. Sometimes it can't hap happen right now. It has to happen after a while. So we have to wait. We have to bide our time. But it will happen. If we are gods, it will happen. Whatever good quality there is in divine grace, you shall enjoy it to the full. All the riches of divine grace you shall receive in plenty. You shall be, as it were, drenched with it. And as sometimes the meadows become flooded by the bursting rivers, and the fields are turned into pools, so shall you be. The thirsty land shall be springs of water. So even though it may not be now, it will be. <coughs> even though we used to be this way and have gone into a dry season, it'll go back to the way it was. And we may, we don't know when it'll happen, and we may not realize it as it starts to happen, but it will happen. Every single one of us will be this way. Some have to wait longer than others. Some go longer than others in that state. From my own perspective, and I don't know if this is accurate, but from my own perspective, I felt like that the, the first 20 years of me being a, a Christian was that way. What we have to know and remember and remind ourselves of, and this is why it's so important to read the scriptures, 
to be reminded of these things is that the Lord said he will never leave us without something He'll never leave us without some kind of recourse. He'll never leave us without an action. He's always going to be interactive in our lives. And even though we may perceive an emptiness or a dry season or a dry spell or a lack of fruit, we have, always have to remember we only see from one, one perspective ours. We don't see from his perspective or any other perspective. What we don't see, others do. What we don't experience or, or are able to look out and say, that's it, others see quite easily. It can be hard to wait. It can be hard to be patient. It can be hard to be faithful and hopeful and trust in the Lord when things look terrible everywhere we look. But if we wait, faithfully wait, remind ourselves of the promises that God has put within his scriptures towards us who believe. And know that it won't last forever. The only thing that will last forever is eternal bliss in heaven with him. And so the equation comes to if we belong to God, what do we worry about? Why do we worry about anything? But that can be hard to achieve while you're in the throes of the event. While you're in the middle of something like that. Well, this is where reminders come in. And this is why I'm here among other people is to remind you. It may seem dry now, but the rains will come. It, you may seem like you're fruitless now, but the Lord will bear fruit through you. It may seem daunting and there's no hope now, but the skies will change. The light will change. The understanding will change and the peace and the joy will come because the Lord said he would do that for us. He will answer our prayers. He did last night. He does every night, every day. And so if that's our state that we stand in, all we have to do is pray and wait on the Lord. All we have to do is weather that season. Job had a long season. We don't know how long it was. It could have been a long time. Well, there was nothing. He had nothing. He literally lost everything he had. Didn't even have clothes except for one one thing. He, I guess he was in sackcloth or something. Nothing else. He went from bathing his front steps with cream to nothing, sitting in the dirt. And he weathered that, he weathered that storm. He weathered that dry season. But then what happened? The Lord brought the rain. And it's so funny because when you're reading that book and you see it's dry, he's in the dust, everybody's talking to him. It's just, it's like he's just surrounded on all sides by enemies. And then they can see the Lord coming in a storm cloud. And he brought the rain. And he made his life fruitful again. So if you're in that state, hang on a little longer. Keep praying. Stay focused, stay strong. It, it may not seem like anything is going to happen, but I tell I can tell you from personal experience, it can happen literally in an instant, and all of a sudden everything changes. I've had it happen to me so fast I couldn't keep up with it. I couldn't believe how quickly it was things were changing for the better. So hang on, stay strong, stay focused. If you're in that situation and you need help, ask for help. That's what we're all here for, to take care of each other and help each other. But if it's a situation that you're in and you know, okay, that I'm in a dry season, just wait. I don't feel like I'm bearing fruit, just wait. I guarantee you, you don't feel like you're bearing fruit, I guarantee you're bearing fruit. You're doing it and don't realize it. Our prayers are fruit. Our thanksgiving, our praises, our glorying, our worship is fruit. And we will bear other fruit.
It's just a matter of time. Let the Lord do his work in you because he's going to bring you to a much greater scenario. Some fruit trees, when they plant them, don't produce anything. And the, the, the standing rule most of the time is, is that when you get a crop, when you get a fruit tree to produce, you throw the first harvest away. It's no good. But you, you, you consume the second harvest on. And there's some fruit trees that they just will not bear. And so they'll fertilize them, they'll work with them. They beautiful leaves, they, they shape out really well, they bear no fruit. Or minuscule fruit. And then all of a sudden something changes. And it's the most beautiful fruit that you've ever seen. There was an orchard out here by Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg's known for its peaches. And uh, there was an orchard out there and a guy had bought it. It was an old orchard. Couldn't get the trees to put anything on. Couldn't get the trees to put anything on. Couldn't get the trees to put anything on. He did everything he could. Couldn't get the trees to put anything on. And these were mature trees. They just would not produce. Because the place had, had been left to go wild. So he got it all cleaned up, mowed all the grass, trimmed everything up, uh, got all the trees situated, trimmed them up. And so he said, I'm not going to worry about it, getting anything out of this. I'm just going to get everything the way it should be. And so that's what he focused on. And it took him a couple of years to get it all completely, completely the way he wanted it. And then he would walk out there and he would just, in the silence, just walk out there in the silence. Just walk through the trees. Talk to them. You know, like you do when you go out, just talk to whoever's listening, the air. And um, one season, they all had fruit. And they came out the biggest peaches you've ever seen in your life. I remember getting one, and it was like it was like holding on to a softball. It was almost the size of a softball. It's a huge peach. Sweet, wonderful, juicy, amazing. And as far as I know, the orchard's still going strong. You never know when it's going to happen, but you do know, and we all know, that it is the Lord that is working these things out. And so if you're in a situation like this, and all of us have been in a similar situation, and nobody is alone in this, the Lord is working things to, to bring you to a place where you will produce the most amazing fruit you can possibly imagine. So stay strong. Stay focused. Stay faithful. Stay the course because the rain is coming and the Lord will shower upon all of us wonderful, wonderful life-giving water to his glory and to the glory of his name. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory and to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. I thank you that we have dry seasons. It teaches us patience. And I've had plenty of dry seasons. And yet, we're still able to produce fruit even in those seasons. Um, even if it may not be that good. But the rain always comes. You always bring rain for us. We're always able to, to do better. We're always able to come out of a situation. Sometimes our own decisions are what are holding us back. And we need to prune a few things out of our lives in order to have a good life, in order to bear good fruit. So Lord, I thank you that we have these times of dryness, these times of, of where we don't feel like we're doing anything, where we don't feel like anything's happening, where, <laughs> where we don't feel like we're moving anywhere, where maybe even we don't feel like we're that faithful. Because they teach us to watch closer. They teach us to examine ourselves. They teach us patience. They teach us to wait on you. To pray. To believe the promises. It gives us a great opportunity for someone like me to lead somebody back into your scriptures and say, go find these promises and read them. And in the act of doing that, they find encouragement in other areas by reading other scriptures. But we get there. We wait on you. And then you bring the rain. And then everything is so much better. Right now, the church, the worldwide church is waiting for the latter rain. The latter rain is coming. We know it is because your word tells us it is. And so for any of us, Lord, that aren't, well, not, not that we aren't, but that we don't feel like we're bearing fruit, Lord, 
Make us to be patient and to wait and to realize we're already bearing fruit. We just need to keep doing it until it, the rains come. For those of us that are bearing fruit, that we help others. You know, one tree in an orchard helps another tree by sharing pollination. They pollinate each other. The birds, the bees, everybody else does it. The bugs and that. And so they, they share the pollen. Even the wind will do it. But may we all watch. May we all wait. May we all be patient. And look for that latter rain. Because we know what's coming. For all of us that are waiting, it's the removal of the church. Where we stand in the light with you. In the glory. In glory. In heaven with you. Forever. So while we're still here, Lord. While we're waiting. Make us to be, to be patient to wait on this. Make us to be faithful. Make us to trust you. To put our full faith and hope and trust in you for all things. To believe your word. And to know that times of refreshing are coming. Times of joy. Times of great fruit bearing are coming. And all we have to do is hang on. The events of last night show that your hand is more than working in America. And the consequences of that are going to stretch around the entire world because other countries will also reap the benefits. May we not in this time, Lord, forget you, but instead remember to give thanks to you for the wonderful blessings you pour out on, on us every single day. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It can be really easy to lose focus. It can be easy to lose hope. It can be easy to become discouraged. My hope is that I can encourage everybody to keep going. Encourage everybody to keep standing. Encourage everybody to know that God is in control and to know that he is bringing that life-giving rain. He's going to help. He already has. And he will continue to do so, especially to those of the house of faith. And so as members of the house of faith, let us be grateful. Let us give thanks. And let us pray by intercession for those who struggle, for those who can't, for those who are having a hard time. They need us. We need them. And the Lord wants all of us. If we're brothers and sisters in Christ, this is our duty. This is our goal. So let's do that. Let's help others be fruitful. Let's show them where they already are bearing fruit. And help encourage them to keep going a little further. To hang on a little longer. To be a little more patient. And then the Lord will bring the glorious, glorious latter rains to quench everyone's thirst. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.